If you've ever got frustrated when Excel just refuses to recognize what is obviously a date as a date, then this is the video for you. I've got a load of examples of cleaning up dirty dates in Excel using functions, so let's go. Hi, I'm John, qualified accountant with 25 years Excel experience, and if you want better Excel results faster, then make sure you hit subscribe and the bell icon so you don't miss any of my time saving tips. And today we're talking about saving time and a heck of a lot of frustration cleaning up dates in Excel. Now, typically, you know, when you paste information from other systems or the internet or anything like that into Excel, it's pretty good at recognizing what it is. But quite often, dates are one of those things that can quite often mess up. Here's a whole load of stuff that you know it's pretty obvious this is dates but if i just highlight all of that data there and say oh, i want to format it as a long date which is where the month is spelled out in words um nothing changes and the reason nothing changes is because it doesn't recognize it's a date it clearly thinks this is text so before i go on right you need to understand just one thing about excel dates because excel dates are literally numbers to give you an example, I've got number one and two here. And if I say, right, I want to format that as a date, you see immediately it says, gives it a date. 1st of January, 1900, 2nd of January, 1900. And that is a clue to what a date in Excel is. It is the number of days since the 1st of January, 1900. So if, for example, I assume 365 days a year, I want somewhere around the year 2000, that's going to be 100 years, so it's going to be about 36,500, a bit more for leap years. I hit that, what do I get? I get 6th of December 1999, so it kind of, kind of works, yeah? Again, if I change that to 45,000, it should be somewhere around about now, depending on, of course, when you're watching this video, and it is. And not that we need to know it for this video, but times in Excel are literally just measured as fractions of days. So if I type in sort of um, 1.25, for example, it still says 1st of January 1900. But if you look at the formula bar here, it's put a 6 a.m. on the end because that is quarter of a day, 0.25. Anyway, so that's what dates are. They're just numbers. So our mission is when we've got dirty data, um, date data, we need to turn it into a value that Excel can then format as a date. That's all we're trying to do. Right, on with the first example then. So I've got a whole load of date here, a few different dates in different columns, and I just want to show you my first function, and it's the very first thing you should test if Ever you can't get something to format as a date probably, properly, and that is the date value. So because I'm dealing with functions, by the way, I'm going to turn it into an Excel table here. Uh, it's something I would always recommend that you do if you've got big blocks of data, because it just saves dragging formulas down and things like that. You can always um, convert it to a range by clicking on that button afterwards, and you can even remove any formatting you don't like, like that. So. Um, there's no harm in turning it to a table and it'll just save you a whole load of time. So I'm just going to highlight, uh, insert a column here, and I use some shortcut keys that you probably saw on screen there. Control space to highlight column and control plus to insert one. And I'm just going to test this. So I'm going to put take date value. It needs one argument, which is a date formatted as text, which is, we hope that. We hit enter, lo and behold, we get a whole load of numbers. Fantastic, because the fact is it now recognizes it as a number and you can see from the numbers, it's probably about right. So let's just control space again to highlight all of that. Let's try formatting it as a long date uh, and we'll span that column. And yeah, it's a date, brilliant, right? And it's not just sort of obvious things like that that will get spotted as a date. This I've got two other examples here, which I'll drag over, of this date two and date three. They've got different styles of formatting, um, but they're again text. 
you know, I can't at the moment turn them into dates. But if I just change that formula and make that date two, again, it's now recognized this as date properly. And it will also recognize things with dashes in as separators as well as dates. So it's quite a flexible formula. It's well worth trying first before you do anything else. It might just solve your problem instantly, date value. Now we have a problem though, what about if we've got a format that date value doesn't recognize? So let's just try this one just to prove it. Date value, it clearly looks like a date. You've got loads of sort of, it's just separated with a period, full stop, depending on what you call it. But it doesn't work. It doesn't like it. So it's not gonna work. So let's just undo that, control Z. We need to get rid of that dot and put something else in. And there's a very simple text formula we can use for that, which is substitute, which allows us to substitute individual characters within text for something else. So we could put one of the, go back to example one, as long as we put something like a slash or a dash, it's gonna work. So let's just try that. So first up, so substitute, hit tab there to sort of auto complete that half. The text, arrow key again, much faster way of selecting columns and tables. Now the old text, right? So this is the text that we want to kind of get rid of. So we want to get rid of these period um, characters. So we'll get rid of periods and what we'll replace them with. Well, we could do a dash, but let's do a slash. It's fine, doesn't really matter. We know that both of them are going to work. Hit enter. So we now have the same dates, but sort of format slightly differently. And now we can run our date value function on there hit enter, it's turned it into a whole load of numbers. And now of course we can hit the spacebar and format those as long dates. And incidentally, um, we could do a really quick formatting of dates using control hash, which formats uh, things as dates instantly as well. So there we go, we've managed to uh, substitute the dots for something that Excel will recognize and then use the date value on that. And of course, you know, we don't have to do that in two separate columns, really. We could just embed that whole function inside a date value function. So if I hit home, date value, end, and then we have our numbers there. Of course, that, that error is because we're not no longer using it. Control space, control hash. We now have proper officially recognized dates in a single column. Incidentally, all of these functions that I'm using today are on my 33 Fantastic Functions Excel cheat sheet. So get your hands on that. There's a link in the description where you can download it. And also there's another link in the description where you can download all of this example data so you can practice yourself and run through it too. All completely free, of course. Moving on then. Um, we might have other examples where it's a lot more dirty, shall we say? You know, in this example here, if I click F2 and go in here, you can see we've got things like spaces afterwards, asterisks, but it could be anything. You know, I've seen letters and things that say like date colon and, and stuff like that. Depends on the system that you've got this information from. And really what we need to do is extract that bit there out of the middle of this text. That would be fine if it was consistent length. Now, it just so happens that it's using kind of three letter months and four digit years, so that's good, but it's not necessarily consistent with the days. It could be two characters, it could be one, and you might have stuff that has like the full name of the month spelled out. So we need a way of kind of getting to this data in a kind of dynamic way. And there's a few functions that we can use to do that, and we're gonna be using here um, len and mid and trim, just to sort of find a bit of information and extract it. So first off then, I'm gonna use trim. And the reason I'm using trim is because there's spaces after and spaces before these uh, dates. And I can't guarantee that that's always gonna be the same amount of spaces. And trim will remove kind of leading and trailing spaces. So we'll just trim it and we'll do that. Right, so we've got the same thing, but trimmed. Okay, then what I want to know is 
We now know that we've got a star and a space at the beginning and a star and a space at the end. So we've got sort of four extra characters, if you like, um, than we need. And so one of the things that we might want to do is determine like the length of the text. We use the function len, which will tell us the length. And you'll see why I do this in a minute. And so we've got basically, if I click on here, you'll see they all happen to be 14 and 15, but they could be all manner of different lengths in your data. And in the third function, what I want to do is extract a piece out of the middle of this data. And I'm going to use mid, which is sort of can, kind of stands for middle, really, doesn't it? So mid. And in this, we can take the middle of some text and we just have to give it the start number and how many characters we want. So that's the text that we're looking at, right? And we know that there's a star and a space before the date. So we know we want to start at character three, right? And how many characters do we want? Well, as I've just said, we know we've got four superfluous characters. So actually we want the length minus four. It's what we should have, right? And when we do that, we should just pull out the date text from the middle of that, right? And it's still text, so we can't do it. we haven't actually got there despite what it looks like. But we're basically back to one of our other examples now, where we can now use date value on that. And we've turned it into a number. And of course, then control space, control hash, we've got our properly formatted dates in Excel again. Now, what if you've got a bit of a mess on your hands? And what do I mean by a bit of a mess? Well, let's imagine that I say I want the date value of this, just test it. So I did tell you earlier, use it as the first thing you test. And I've got among a bunch of sort of numbers, but I've also got some errors. And when I look at the errors, so let's look at these first couple of errors. You see 4, 14, um, 19, 12, 23, 15. So there's clearly a month, day, year value going on there, right? And the reason that it's not understood is because of my local settings here in the UK are the default is day, month, year. Now, if you're in the US, it, the errors would be the complete opposite because it would be erroring on things where it's clearly like, I don't know, you've got a day number that's above 12. So it depends on your local setting as to what's going to error. But the, the thing is, you've got errors. And what's more, if I change that into a long date, it says the 4th of July 2019, but the chances are that that is also um, month, day, year. So it should be the 7th of April. So it thinks it understands it when it doesn't. So we've got a problem here, right? So let's just get rid of all of that. And I'm just going to change this back to general format so that we don't get confused. So the first thing we need to do is switch the month and day around to whatever local settings we've got. So in my case, I want to take the month, which is the first number, um, and then the day, that, which is the second number, and switch them around. And in order to do that, because it's sort of dynamic, I've got two digit and one digit months and days going on, I need to find out where my um, backslash positions are in the text and then I can use the mid function that I used in the previous example to kind of extract that data. So first off then, let's find these functions, right? So first off, I'm going to find um, the first slash. So find function, find the text, well that's that, and where I want to find it, I want to find it in there, right? The next thing is an optional argument, so I can ignore it for the moment, and here I go is I've got a whole load of twos and threes, depending on whether it's a one digit or a two digit month. Let's just call that slash one. And then I'm going to find as well slash two, right? The second one, because that's gonna give me the position of where essentially the year starts and you know the day finishes. So it's the same thing, find, and we wanna still wanna find the slash, right? And we still wanna find it within that text. But now we can use this optional num, uh, argument of the start position, right? Because we know where the first slash is, so that is there. So if we just start one pace past the first slash, we know we'll find the second one, right? So we do that. There we go. We've got a whole series of numbers now. 
So now we need to construct our date. So if I pull out the month first, right? So it's the month. I'm going to say that the month is the everything before the first slash. So we can use the left function, which takes everything to the left of a certain position. So what do we want? We want that text, but we only want it the left characters up to the slash. Now the slash is at position two in this example. So I need to take one off of that because otherwise um, I'll pick up the slash. So if I leave that off for a moment, you see you get the number with the slash. So you just need to make sure that you take one off that. So that is our month number. Now I'm just going to center that with control space, control H A C. And then that will just um, sort of highlight it as a month number. It can easier to see. So now we can uh, try and extract our day. So our day is somewhere in the middle, but we've worked out the positions where it's between position two and position four. So using the mid function, so which text do we want? We want that text. Where do we want to start? Well, we want to start at the slash plus one. So one position after that slash, first slash, right? How many characters do we want? Well, we want the difference between the first and the second slash, right? So let's say it's that minus that, right? But if I just close that off a moment, you'll see, again, you're gonna get the slash afterwards because the difference between four and two is two, but there's only one character between four and two. So again, all we need to do is take the minus one off the end. And there's our day, again, control space, alt H A C to center it. The other thing we're going to need is the year, and that is always a four digit year by the looks of it. So, all we need to do is take the right characters of that text, and we just want the right four characters, which we'll do there. Same thing, I'll just center it. And so now we've got the constituent parts of our date, proper month, day, and year. And now our function, we can literally just use the date function to construct a date from those three pieces of information. It wants the year, comma, it wants the month, it wants the day, close the brackets. There we go, we have our um, date. We can reformat it as a date and we now have our date proper in there. Okay, so you've had a whole load of different examples there, all of these dates and all sorts of other combinations of dates converted into something Excel will recognize with just a few functions. And if you want those functions, they're all on my 33 fantastic functions for Excel cheat sheet, available completely for free, the download link in the description. Okay, hope you enjoyed that, hope you learned something from it and saved a load of time and I'll see you soon.